And we have ourselves a special guest. We were talking about Michigan before the game, a former teammate of C-Web, and now the head coach as they have advanced to the Sweet 16. Coach Jawan Howard joining us here <laughs> yeah, at the fella. MX Halftime. Uh, Jawan, I, I want to tell you something, man. Uh, we wanted to save this, but we can't wait anymore. We want to give you your roses. Uh, not just as someone that's coaching a great team right now, but also someone had a 19-year NBA career, a two-time NBA champ, uh, and now you go and you, you win Big Ten Coach of the Year and you've advanced to the Sweet 16. How does this feel to have done it as a player and now you're leading these young men, the excitement that you have in these few days between games? Well, it's a great feeling. Um, all the hard work that you put in, the passion and love that you have for the game, uh, to be able to impact young men that have those same goals and dreams to, to see the sa the, a similar path and, and not saying that their path gonna be identical as mine, but to help develop them and serve them in, in any kind of way possible, it's a dream come true. What's up, big fella? Love you, congratulations up, brother? on everything you're doing. And, you know, first I wanna shout out the Michigan women's basketball team, because we, yes. we destroyed Candace and, you know, <laughs> Tennessee. And you know how we do it. Chill. We were the six seed in the three. So first, congratulations to the women. And then, yes, but congratulations yes. to you, Juwan. Two questions. One, you know, one is you don't, you know, make sure you don't cut their hair like you used to do ours when we played. And number two, you know, I know this is your team and a lot of people, you know, know you played and things like that. But I know the type of young men you look for. And secondly, what type of young men do you look for to be in your program? Well, uh, first, the first question about the uh, haircut. I mean, I, I'm a, I don't have my clippers with me, so unfortunately, <laughs> I can't cut their hair. Good. I need a barber here in the bubble because my fade <laughs> is kind of dry. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it's totally making me uncomfortable. But uh, the kind of men I look for in the program is the guys that fit the culture. Um, one thing about you know University of Michigan, as you know, uh, the experience is amazing and. You know, I look at guys who want to be a part of the University of Michigan. You know, there are a lot of, you know, beautiful institutions out there, but uh, I'm biased when I say this, but I feel it in my heart that it's the best college in the world. And so with the staff that we have in place, uh, our staff is a player development staff. Uh, we pride ourselves on getting our guys better uh, in the classroom as well as on the court. Um, and we're fortunate enough to have a, a young group like Hunter Dickerson, Terrence Williams, Zeb Jackson, and Jace Howard that believed in the vision. And then we have added guys like Mike Smith and Sean D. Brown. You know, it just took our team to another level. Uh, Juwan, first of all, do me a favor. Turn the coach voice off and give me Juwan. I've been knowing you since 91. I know you're professional, but I don't need you to be professional. But anyway, all jokes aside, I want to say congratulations. And when you first took the job, it was a lot of naysayers who doubted you. Uh, how does it feel to, you know, bring your program this far in your first year? Yeah, big fella, it feels great, man. Um, you know, like I, I said before, and I, I never forget a reporter asked me as far as, you know, do you hear the noise as far as what, you know, media or people that are saying, you know, you're you first time coach, you don't know college, you don't know the game. Um, mm. And that right there, yeah, it, it, it inspired me. Uh, but, you know, I had that, that drive, that I had that love. Um, I didn't really try to perform because of what I heard is just my DNA if I was brought up, you know, coming from Chicago, my grandmother raising me uh, to instill that, hey, you got to work for everything that you, you know, you try to go after, you know, nothing is given to you. And that's real, excuse my language, Ooh. but it, it is what it is. And so uh, with that, I That's a Juwan I know and love. <laughs> That's a Juwan I know and love. Turn off the It's real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, like, with that, you know, I just, uh, I'm, I'm trying to do what, you know, what, it's not all about me. Um, mm. and, and what does that mean? It's, it means that, you know, people that look like me, that play the game of basketball, that want to go into coaching someday, um, I can't mess this up uh, because it's not just my path. I got to be there and, and be successful for those guys, too, that looking to uh, be a head coach someday on the collegiate level. Joan, honestly, I grew up in the Chicagoland area and have followed your career. I grew up uh, trying to be like the Fab Five, wearing black socks, and it's honestly a, a dream to be able to work with some of the people that I've idolized. And so, honestly, it has been amazing to watch you coach in your transition. 
Um, as a fan of basketball now on this side of, of broadcasting, being able to watch the NCAA tournament as a fan is way different. I feel like my heart increases at 10 seconds when the game is tied, where as a player, there's that calm. As a coach, what's the difference going into the NCAA tournament as a player versus as a coach now? Yeah, that's a great question, Candace. And first, I want to say that I'm a huge fan of yours. Um, I claim you because you're from Chicago uh, and you have had so much success on the not only just on the collegiate level, but also on the uh, in WNBA level. So uh, I'm your number one fan. Thank you. <laughs> and what you're doing right now in your, your career, uh, it's, a, it's an impactful and it's a blessing for the young ladies who are trying to you know, strive to be like you someday. And you're a great example. But to answer Thank your you question, so I, was, I would say this, you know, when I go into a game as a coach, uh, I still have nervous energy, just like how I was when I was a player. Uh, but once the game starts, I'm locked in. And am I relaxed? Yes. Uh, but does the game gets very intense? Yes, I have to be the most calm as you could be as a leader because these young men look at me for answers and for direction. And so it, it's very beautiful to see, you know, the impact I'm having on their lives, but I'm learning from them too. So I learn from my players just as much as they learn from me. Nine Big Ten teams entered the tournament. Only one remained, the Michigan Wolverines. Coach Howard, thank you so much. Big Nuke, love you, boy. Hey, I love, love you all, man. Coach. Thanks for having me.